He's a 10. I choose this family. Hi guys, welcome to episode 9 of 911 Lone Star Roundup. I'm one of your hosts, Grace, and with me are my lovely co-hosts, Katie. Hi. <laughs> and DJ. Hey. Today we will be talking about episode 9 of Lone Star, titled Awakening. Of course, as always, a quick reminder that we aren't recapping the episodes, we're just talking about what stood out to us. Alright, let's do it. This episode starts with a case, or a call. They're having, a family is having a gender reveal party. Oh. <laughs> and pregnant mom has four, has three sons, and is hoping for a girl. <laughs> By the energy they, that the kids show, I can kind of understand why. Yeah. Even the dad's hoping for a girl. Yeah. Those kids are devils, I'm sorry, but they were. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, so when they do the little canon thing that the it was done too soon, and I guess it was a starch-based powder, and it came out pink. Yeah. Um, and the starch, I guess, caught hit the barbecue, and it caught fire, so it sprayed up and caught the person by the barbecue on fire. So yeah. somebody yeah. else dunks him in the pool. Yeah, had to go yeah. dive, throw him into the pool, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really... like that's good. That's good, like plate scene. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is why you should not do the powder, whatever the canon gender mm-hmm. reveal things. Like, get a cake. Yeah, right? there you yeah. go. It's a lot I safer. mean, let's look at this year. Like one of the biggest wildfires in California was started by a gender reveal party. Right. Yeah. And, like, uh, all the chemicals and yeah. all the... It, it's just so flammable. Everyone, if you do a gender reveal part, do a freaking cake! Yeah. Okay, I'm done. Or a balloon. Um, or or balloons, the, aren't, yeah. balloons aren't great, great either, because if they just, dis- like, the fly yeah, away, they... Leave, they but... Yeah. yeah. Um, or the paint uh, thing. Let's, end... let's do the, um... Let's do the <laughs> cake. I like cake. Yeah. yeah. Cake's good. Uh, but so when they respond, the 126, you see the judge is, Judd is kind of in charge of the 126. I loved that so much. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> so we see uh, Judd in a little bit of different uh, in charge capacity than he normally is. So that was kind of mm-hmm. a cool thing. But through all the stress of getting the fire put out and getting the rescuing the guy that got burned, the woman's water breaks <laughs> mm. <laughs> and the team is forced because the paramedics had just left with the guy who'd been injured the team is now forced to help deliver the baby <laughs> in the backyard <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god i'll tell you in that scene like she's he's like i don't remember exactly what he said but he was like how do you know, or something like that? And she's like, trust me, I've had three of these. Like, um, I know. Yeah. Moms know. Right. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> yeah. And then Judd's given out orders, and he's like, tells Marjan, you know, uh, everything, get everything to help Marjan. And she looks at him like, why me? And he's like, well, you're certified, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I was just like, oh, it's typical like i could see where she's like really like because that's you know guys telling the woman to deliver the baby like <laughs> like like the moment is is it because i'm a girl like that yeah. moment yeah that, right i kind of feel like judd was almost more doing out of it and out of i don't want to do it yeah and not it <laughs> i don't even know if he's certified yeah, yeah. like that might legitimately be <laughs> Because I think the only other time that came into question was with the race slating. He just went, no. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, no. No. <laughs> and I, I love, did you guys see the three little boys when the baby was born? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and my and they're like, no. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> and then it turns out to be a boy and they're like, yeah. And the mom just starts crying. <laughs> and the, <laughs> and the father just cry. looks distraught, like, oh. <laughs> and, yeah. but, the, but the powder was pink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it happens, though, if you don't get a blood test, if you only go by ultrasound or something, then it, it, it happens more often than you might think. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I don't even know if the blood test is 100% accurate, but so yeah. much more reliable than the ultrasound. Yeah. Yeah, without... Uh... 
having an amniocentesis, there's no really way of knowing 100% for sure until the baby's born. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So speaking of babies and young kids, um, we go right into a flashback of young TK mm-hmm. uh, in December of 2001 in New York City. So this will be just a few months after September 11th of that year. Mm-hmm. Um, this is actually the scene where if you have the um, captions on, you'll see Gwyneth's name. For the first time, that's how you kind of learn her name as TK's mom. And I thought it was pretty cool that, you know, we kind of get a little glimpse of TK's past and, um, you know, TK's birthday that I guess it was at TK's birthday and Owen had missed it. And he's trying to tell Gwen, you can hear Owen and Gwen arguing in the background um, about why he didn't show up sooner and how TK understands and he's trying to explain that, you know, he had a couple of guys at the firehouse that were struggling and he was trying to help them out and it's been a tough year. And yeah, I was just, it was, it was a good scene because you kind of got to see a little bit of what TK had gone through, but also kind of just emotional to see like what TK was hearing from his parents, yeah. like the arguments and stuff. Cause he was only like <clears throat> seven yeah. at that. And yeah. Honestly, watching his face, because I've been in his position, like, during the parents' fighting and everything, and just watching it, he looked kind of lost and really sad, and, like, he didn't understand what was going on, really. And, honestly, there's one thing, and this just occurred to me, that doesn't make sense to me. The guys at the station were having a rough time at, just because it's after 9-11, but Owen was the only survivor of, of his station, so, does that mean he got in other transfers from uh, other stations that I bought? Well, the whole reason why he was hired in Austin was because he had rebuilt the one twenty, the two fifty two in New York after nine eleven. So, yeah, but I'm I'm questioning like the guys that he like rebuilt the station with, like no, had they also guys been transferred in? Yeah, yeah, oh, that yeah. just struck me because I'm like, didn't everybody die? Because part of the reason that it took so long, I think, in Austin is because they also had to remodel the building. Right. Um, because they had lo- that was so outdated and so old that they had to remodel some things. Um, whereas the, the 252 might not have been um, in need of as much remodeling. So it was just more or less bringing people in. Yeah. yeah but that was that was a scene that kind of hit differently. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, would, I would like seeing... Like I would like to see a few more flashbacks, maybe not necessarily yeah. to that particular time or pure that part of the life before, yeah. but like just see yeah. just see more of that. Yeah, and I I thought it was so cute that Tiki's playing with like a toy uh, fire truck. Oh, I know. Which, baby, you know, we'll kind of talk about you know later in the episode. You know, as Tiki's starting to think about things, but you know, so we get this flashback. Um, and then we have Owen and Zoe are in TK's hospital room. Uh, and Owen's kind of explaining to Zoe, so this must be the first time she's visiting since it happened. Um, and he's explaining that TK's in a level two coma. I guess the bullet um, didn't hit his heart, thankfully, or his spine, but it nicked um, the subclavian artery. And he went into shock, hypo- hypovolemic shock, where some of his organs shut down. Which was not good. (laughs) But he seemed to be bouncing back, which was, you know, awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, it could have gone so much worse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so Owen kind of semi introduces uh, Zoe to TK. (laughs) That scene where he's like, Is she my doctor? And she's like, What? No, no, no. Yeah. 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 Um, Yeah. And then kind of this like transition between. Owen and Zoe and TK and Owen, it's, um, we could learn a little bit more about TK's mom, that she's traveling in China of all places, uh, for business, just because we know that the coronavirus kind of, we believe originated in China mm-hmm. and the time frame of when this possibly could have happened was right around that. So I'm curious how they're going to address that. Yeah. If they are. Yeah, because it was so coincidental. Like, obviously, they didn't know when they filmed this right. about this. But, but that's just, just like, oh, snap. It's so weird. You can't yeah. not address it. Like, you said it. You put it out there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah. I just so I, I'm excited because we do know that they've cast someone for his mom. 
Um, yeah. Who is a former co-star of Rob Lowe's from another series he was in. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the, uh, how she plays into Owen's stress levels um, yeah. oh my god <laughs> the way he talks just, about her I'm like uh, what are we supposed to be expecting here yeah and, and while they're in the hospital room and Owen's standing next to TK all of a sudden TK wakes up uh, kind of mm-hmm. slowly and I don't know I just yeah he's kind of groggy and yeah like Grace said earlier he looked over and he saw Zoe and he's like is she my doctor <laughs> like, oh no, but no, that's, no, no and that's after like Owen had to explain that he's in the hospital and he got shot. Owen being the caring dad there, I mean, oh Mm. my gosh. Yeah. Also, like, um, before TK woke up, Owen said something along the lines of, like, he moans in his sleep and he, he, like, chews in his sleep, oh god, he must be hungry or something like that. (laughs) And I'm like, oh my god. Every time I hear that, I'm like, (gasps) oh. Oh my god. Makes me think that he was probably out of it for you know, probably a week. Yeah. Or, or yeah. So. Yeah, which makes sense. Timeline of when he was released from the hospital because you don't get shot and then you're allowed to go right away. Right. He had to be there at least a week. Yeah. yeah. And then when Zoe says, No, I'm not your doctor, she's like, I'm his date. And then I love TK's line, You brought a date? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he's still a little bit out of it, so he's like, um, I'm sorry, what? What did I miss right. exactly? But then Owen's like, he's like trying to like, he's got the look of I want to deny this, but I really can't. So I'm just yeah. not <laughs> just say yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> he's trying to be like, well, no, but yeah, I did. I can't deny In a way, that. I did. Yeah. Oh. Then we go to when TK's a little bit more awake. Mm-hmm. and Owen and he are talking, and Owen's explaining what happened. And TK learns that a seven-year-old boy shot him with his grandfather's gun because he was trying to protect his family. And TK, all he can think about is his the little kid. And Owen's like, it's just like you to be concerned about somebody else when you're lying in the hospital with a bullet hole. Yeah. Which also really shows a little bit of TK's character that he from what Owen's perspective TK is very concerning about other people or concerned about other people and their well-being yeah Yeah, very true and when um and when TK tells him you know he's going home tomorrow and he can't remember it but he can't remember being the kid that remembers it all right I can't imagine that yeah oh my gosh no he was only a little kid too like little yeah Seven years old. Yeah. Yeah, like... Imagine that. Yeah. I mean, he didn't know, and I'm sure there was a lot of trauma for him and stuff, and, Mm -hmm. like, it's hard. Mm Mm-hmm. And Owen shared that, you know, that the kid was um, seeing an APD counselor, um, because obviously they can't charge the kid with, you know, anything. Yeah. Because it was such an accident. I mean, I remember... The town I grew up in, there was a an accidental shooting. Um, A little boy brought um, his mom's gun to school in his backpack, and he didn't know it was loaded. And after, towards the end of the day, he went to put his backpack up on the his desk, and it um, went off and shot a little girl in the abdomen. Oh my god! Oh my god! And she had to be airlifted to um, the hospital. And she ended up, from what I understand, she survived, but it was just, I mean, it, that was literally an accidental shooting. And, it, you know, yeah. there was a whole, like, court case with it because of how the kid got the gun and why he brought it to school and stuff like that. But still, yeah. like, that little girl, um, like, and, and that kid was probably around seven or eight. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing about, like, I imagine not for every kid, but a lot of seven-year-olds, they don't get the concept of, like, death Mm -hmm. and i don't think it of course depends on like what the kid knew but um for for the one that shot tk he likely knew that the gun was a method of defense Mm -hmm. because he had seen his grandfather using it or 
ready to use it to defend the family, he wouldn't have meant to try and kill TK. Because, I mean, it's Texas, but I don't think he knew what was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, and I also think, like, um, you know, yeah, kids are kind of, I don't know, resilient is not really the word, but, yeah, they hadn't quite understood everything yet. Um, Yeah. And, like, TK doesn't remember anything. And I just... (laughs) So I didn't actually know. Okay, so when I first started watching this series, I only came to it because I knew of Rob Lowe and Liv Tyler. But I didn't know who Ronan was at the time. So mm-hmm. I also didn't know he was really good friends with um, Alberto Freza, who played in Station 19 as a cop. Yeah. Who, <laughs> and I'd watched some of Station 19, but not all of it. So I didn't know that Alberto's character had been killed off by a child yeah. shooting him in the shoulder yeah. the same side. So it was like the parallels of Alberto's character shooting and TK's shooting yeah. <laughs> was very scarily <laughs> similar. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was planned because I don't know if it was known at the time that Ronan and Alberto were friends, but um, yeah. thankfully TK survived. Yeah. Yeah, thankfully. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think people knew they were friends. Well, some people knew they were friends because they did a show together, and that's, I think, how they met or became friends. Yeah. But, yeah, like I said in our last episode, like, that death was a lot worse than this. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so in this, you know, they're TK and Owen are talking, and then Tiki's like, okay, there's one more thing I have to ask. <laughs> but you've got to give it to me straight. And Owen's like, sure, anything. Kiki's like, what's the deal with the hot babe Zoe? <laughs> and Owen's like trying to be like, no, stop talking about her like that. And like, I get what Owen was getting. And then he's like, oh, okay, I guess she is. Yeah, she's a hot baby. But he's like, he's like, she's the head of the psychology department at University of Texas. And he's like, okay, I admit she's a hot babe. Because like, yes, yeah, she is. Like, yeah, she is. You gonna tell me how long you've been seeing her? And Owen comes back with the best comeback. Yeah, when you tell me how long you've been seeing the cop, and GK's reaction is like, oh god, and like, it's his forehead. <laughs> the cop, the cop, the cop. The cop, the cop. Carlos! Poppy. So, but, like, I can, I can only imagine what TK was thinking at that moment. Oh my god, where is Carlos? Where is Carlos? Was he what here? What did he do? I, what did he say? <laughs> <sighs> I don't even know what we are. What did he do? Yeah, mm-hmm. I know, and we don't even get that until yeah. like the second hour. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, because this episode was the first of the two. Yeah, the season finale. Yeah, yeah. And we don't even get any Carlos in this episode no. at all. How dare they? Sadly, I know. <laughs> we need Carlos in every episode. Yeah, don't be doing that to us in season two. I can't yeah. handle that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And so that scene ends, and then we move to the team at the 126 getting off, and uh, Marjan and Buttercup are hanging out, and Mateo and Paul are getting ready to leave with Marjan, and Judd comes around. They talk about, like, I get, so they, Owen must have called them and let them know that TK woke up because they're talking about well, how long is it going to be till he comes back, and because um, Mateo wanted to know, and we have a mention of 911 OG. The chimney, uh, the oh firefighter with the rebar in his forehead, oh yeah, in his brain, and he was back to work within a month. Yeah, um, which is a little nine one one Easter egg. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, oh my gosh, did they just do? That? They just did that. Yeah, it's like my buddy swears it's true because no one really believed him. Yeah, but so who's the buddy? True. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, who's the buddy. <laughs> I, because obviously, like Texas, I think it might be Eddie, but like it could be anybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, different parts of Texas, so that's not exactly reliable. Yeah. True. I really hope they plan on bringing that off again in the crossover. Just. I feel like that was deliberate. Yeah, just so we know. I just need to know, like, the connection. Who's your buddy? Yes. Who's your buddy? Who's your friend? Please tell. <laughs> We need it. Yeah. Watch it be like Grace is related to Athena or something. Oh, oh my gosh. 
I mean, maybe. <laughs> that would be kind of, like, awesome in a way. I don't know, like... I mean, too badass women. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, that, and I don't know, I just feel like that'd be a really cool connection, like... <laughs> Married to firefighters. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I just loved that idea. <laughs> and both, um... This is going to sound weird, but I just want to connect it. Both in interracial relationships. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't think about it that way. I didn't either. Love that. Okay, now I want this. <laughs> Same. <laughs> when are we going to get the crossover? Yes. <laughs> Come on, we need it now. Okay. <laughs> what always confuses me, and I've thought about this before, is like every time they get off of shift, it always seems that they're getting off at night. And also when they're starting their shifts, it almost seems like it's at night. Because in episode four, when they're starting their shift, they're, like, making dinner, and, like, mm-hmm. Judd is talking about his fight or whatever, his moment of grace or whatever. So it always confuses me, because it always seems like they start their shifts at night or whatever, and they're always getting off at night. And I'm like, what is going on? But when TK and Carlos hook up and it's, TK leaves, it's in the middle of the day. Yeah, it's, like, so inconsistent. It could just be how they mm-hmm. film it. But, but, like, but that's also how the shifts work you yeah. don't always work like day to night it's night to day and all yeah. over the place i guess it's just confusing because every other show is like the complete opposite so it's like uh what's happening here that's yeah, true yeah because yeah. you know it and i know most um departments like be some they they're 24 hour shifts well actually usually they start a 48 hour shift yeah um, usually at like eight or nine in the morning and then it goes for 48 hours so then they get off in the morning on their day off, you know, the day they get off. Yeah. Um, or I know some departments, like, start, their shifts change at noon. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, yeah, so I, I get what you're saying. Like, it's sometimes they start their shift early in the day. Sometimes they get off at night. Yeah. Um, and w- But we don't see them leaving, um, or excuse me, we don't see them sleeping all the time. Yeah. So maybe they have, like, 12-hour shifts where they yeah. work 12, like, the night shift or they work the yeah. afternoon shift. And I mean, in the episode where Owen meets Grace, he says, can you believe I just got off 24-hour shift? So that, like, I don't know. It's just weird that I just oh, thought about Zoe? it. Yeah. I said Grace, didn't I? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, Lone Star, you need to picture inconsistencies, or at least explain them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the little things, the people that watch a million times catch up on. Yeah. <laughs> the true yeah. fans catch the inconsistency. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. By true fans, I mean the ones that watch it a million times is stated. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and then while we've got this scene, we get Judd. We kind of start to get a little bit about Judd's backstory. Um, he gets a call from his dad. So we learn his dad is still with us. And so he's got some family stuff he's going to go have to take care of. Something seems a little fishy about the call his dad made to him. And it sounded like he, his dad was supposed to be over at their house for dinner that night. Yeah. I'm guessing it's something where Judd just knew his dad well enough to go, oh, okay, this is all right. Let's go. But this is really the first we've seen of family. Mm-hmm. Other than, obviously, Grace. But I don't yeah. know if it's really even been talked about before. Mm-hmm. So I have to say I was a bit surprised with this. I'd kind yeah. of written off family. Yeah, it was kind of a little bit of a shock. Um, I wouldn't say completely out of left field, because we are still getting to know all the characters. Yeah. Um, and Judd is one of the few characters that are initially established from Texas. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. So, I mean, it was kind of neat. So Judd goes over there and meets, you know, finds his dad on the floor and realizes his dad had fallen at some point and didn't, his dad didn't want to call anybody to come help him up. So then we start to learn, okay, a little bit about Judd's family. Like, it sounds like his mom's passed away. His siblings are, aren't really in the picture, even though it looks like he's got several. So kind of Judd's the closest family to him mm-hmm. um, in location-wise. So it sounds like kind of Judd's getting a picture of, like, maybe Dad shouldn't be living on his own anymore. And they've been in a house for 40-some-odd years. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I work with, you know older people i i get it and i have a dad who's in his 70s right now so <laughs> it's uh they can be a little stubborn <laughs> oh yeah yeah a lot also stubborn. the house was kind of depressing 
Oh, yeah. It was like, well, he was in the dark because... But, like, even when we see it a little bit later... Yeah. Um, it's like, oh, okay, it's still depressing. Yeah. And there's dishes all over the kitchen. Things hadn't been done. And it was, like, a just super dark color themed. Yeah. And, like, I know some people like that, but, um... It, yeah, it was just depressing. Yeah, not me. Yeah. And, like, there's a few things about this, like... So family wise, there was a picture. If you paused it for good, whatever, you know that he has at least two brothers and a sister. And then his mom, we find out in this part, is dead. And like, then his father is like, like Judd's like, oh, I can help you take that rug out because his dad didn't want to get rid of it or whatever. But like, kind of makes me wonder how long his mom has been dead with that mm -hmm. like how long has the rug been like that it kind of seemed like she had been gone a while yeah. i would have guessed at least maybe five years probably yeah. more that's what i was thinking there was a lot of detachment there like not a lot of grieving i guess yeah uh, it was obviously a conversation they'd had before or something similar yeah so well, and, I, and yeah. I think to the era that his dad seemed to be of the age of um, they don't often show their emotions certain ways and they want their things their way and they, you know, like, this is my house and this is how it's going to stay. And, yeah. um, they were kind of raised to not change things. Like, you know, you buy a house, you stay there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it, it was kind of like, he didn't want to change anything. And yeah, you're right. I think it was a lot of like, he didn't want to change your things cause he was still mourning his wife. Yeah. Being gone. Yeah. And I mean, some people never get over, like, losing their spouse because they figure they'll, like, they want to be together forever and they'll just die that way. He might never get over it or whatever. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. And sometimes it's just, even if they're not, even if it's not a thing of, like, they're still mourning, it's a way to stay close to them. Right. And not really acknowledge the fact that they're completely gone. Yeah, so speaking of father and son situations, then we kind of move on to TK has TK! come home. He's oh on the God. couch. And him T and Owen are bantering back and forth. Owen's being a mother hen. <gasps> you know? Love that. Bringing him water. Oh. And TK's like, don't tell me what color my pee should be. <laughs> the part where he says, what does he say? Um, oh, oh, Owen's like... Owen's like, you look uncomfortable, let me, like, give you a pillow uh, or something, yeah. and TK's like, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. He looked, like, very uncomfortable, I was like, oh my god, TK, stop, you're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> and then, like, he's, he gets a pillow behind him, and I'm like, he looks, like, he was in his sweatpants, and, like, he looks so comfortable in that moment, but also, like, not, I'm like, oh, why do I love that so much? I love that scene. I just watch that to laugh sometimes. I'm just like, oh my god, this is good banter. And TK's really? like trying to talk Owen into going back to work because he's like, if you go now, you can probably make shift. Mm -hmm. like, TK never. didn't want him home for the next three weeks taking care of him. I would have loved to see that. Oh my yeah. gosh. We that probably would have seen TK just totally bringing his head against the sofa, like, just stop. <laughs> Either that or he'd run away to Carlos's. <laughs> He's like, I'm fighting okay, out. I want this. <laughs> yeah. I want um, this. I'm writing the vampire. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> and you can, you can definitely see that some, t something's on TK's mind, too. You could, Like, he's not just trying to get his dad to go to back to work. I think it's like he's kind of almost thinking about his life. Yeah, I think and he needs the space to just think things through. Kind of decompress. And yeah. I think, you know, Owen was kind of pushing. He's like, ah, don't worry. You'll be back. And, you know, because they originally, I guess, had, had told him he'd be out of work for like three, four weeks. And mm -hmm. Owen's like, ah, you'll be back two weeks, three weeks tops. And TK's like, yeah, we'll see. So, you, like, <sighs> I got that moment of like, okay, you're questioning something. What is that something? I didn't yeah. think it was physical at that point because I'm like, ah. Uh... No, there's something else going on here. Yeah. And then we have the cave scene. Yeah. Oh, gosh. This scene makes me uncomfortable. I don't know why, it's a, but another, just a bit. It's, it's another father-son bonding. Yeah. Also, that poor scene. kid. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh my gosh. Like, my thought is, like, if you know that, like, why would you go down that far? First of all, why would you go in a cave like that? Like, it just sounds so uncomfortable and dangerous. And I mean, I don't like being in tight spaces, so I guess I'm not one to talk. Yeah. But still, it just doesn't seem right. (laughs) Oh my gosh, yeah. Like, I don't necessarily mind tight spaces, but that's still, like, in the dark. Um, Ty, you don't know where you're going. And yeah. seriously, God, yeah, there there was so much about that, which I just kind of wanted to shake the dad for, because I was like, just stop. Right. Yeah. And, I, and he was, like, trying to get his son to, like, be a man and, like, get him to, like, grow up, I guess. And it just... Well, stand up to a bully, wasn't it? Uh, like, yeah, get courage, stand up for a bully. Yeah. Um, I think it was... Was it, he's trying to make a decision about what he was going to do for college oh, or something? Get to, oh, get to, uh, basically man up to apply for art school or something. Yes. Yeah. That was it. Okay. I was remembering something else with the bully thing. <gasps> oh, man. And then, like, when the crew arrives, because, the you know, the father and son go in and the dad gets stuck. So then the kid has to leave the cave because there's no service and he has to go call for help. And when the crew comes... And Owen's um, there. Judd's like, man, I wish they'd close this cave off. Had three calls to it. And what we find out is this specific area, there's been three people that have gotten stuck and died not being able to get out. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is, though it's kind of cool because we get to see Marjan and Mateo because they're the smallest going into this cave because there's pretty tight spaces. Yeah. Um, so Marjan and Mateo get to go in and be the um, heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. it's being called the birthing canal, and I'm like, that's a little too fitting. Yeah. <laughs> that's another reason why you should not be in there. Oh my yeah. God. I'm like, that just sounds painful. <laughs> also, yeah. okay. Uh, oh my gosh, I draw too many. Like, <laughs> um, sorry, I'm having crisis. Um, the birthing canal, which is supposed to give life, but people keep dying in it. Yeah. Yeah. The irony. Should that be called the dying canal anyway? <laughs> <laughs> the dying canal. Love that. Just keep it real here. I mean, yeah. Oh man. Mm. So then, after so we so they end up rescuing the dad after some struggle, and kid and the dad kind of have their moment, and then Judd and Owen kind of. I I could see the turmoil on both of their faces, like. Owen's like concerned, obviously, about TK, and in that moment, and then Judd's got his dad on his mind because the next scene we see is Judd and uh, Grace having dinner with his dad at their place, and that conversation doesn't go so well. Oh my gosh! Yeah, stubborn old goat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man, was he? He was. Yeah, but he's acting as I would expect. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Well, people don't want to admit they need help and they don't want to admit when they're getting older <laughs> and yeah. uh then you had like stubbornness on top of it yeah one well, and, and you know judd and grace were kind of suggesting that maybe he think about selling the house because it's so big because he doesn't need that big a house anymore and move closer to him and grace since they're the only ones that you know it sounds like are, are around anymore or nearby yeah uh, you know so they have so unfortunately his dad I think his, was it Stuart, I think is his dad's name. Yeah, yeah I think doesn't, so. Doesn't take too kindly with that. And we also learned that his dad was on oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and that sounds like that's how he, what his job was. Um, Which I think yeah. that's cool. Like yeah. learning that. Mm-hmm. So we learn a little more about kind of maybe uh, Judd's upbringing in that way. So his dad might not have been around a lot when he was a kid. Because if, if I'm understanding it correctly, the guys will go out for like six weeks at a time six to eight weeks and then they'll come back for another shift yeah 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 so get a little bit and then he gets upset when you know they start asking him to move closer and sell his house and stuff and talk about some accidents he got into and so he leaves upset which is uh understandable yeah and then we uh i feel like the awakening is a good name because it's like everybody in this episode 
is getting awakened in some way. Yeah. You know, or the, the father son moments in, you know, we've got TK and Owen, we've got Judd and his dad, we've got the case from the, um, you know, the cave. And then we've got the next one, which is the whole kid sticking the toy up his nose. <laughs> Poor Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Paul. Like, oh my god. The scene was like a lot. Like, it's like the kid sticks the car up the nose. And then, like, the funniest part was when. Because it smelled like cinnamon. And he liked cinnamon. Oh, yeah. I didn't even yeah. remember that part. Yeah. But, like, <gasps> um. But, like, Paul. Like, pulls it out of his nose eventually. And the funniest part was. Mateo's <laughs> like, You made a crack kid cry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And they're just ripping at him, and Paul just gives them a death glare, like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I feel like is such a real look, because, like, I think, like, Jules and Brian and Natasha are all, like, the closest, probably. Like, I can just tell from, like, what they post and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just think, like, that, like, half of their looks on the show are just, like, so real, and I'm like, oh my god, I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the dad yeah. later calls them because he wanted to know how the kid had managed it and cut the car stuck up his own nose. Let your yeah. mind wander. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That doesn't need to be explored. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm thinking, and I love Owen's just like, how? Uh, why? <gasps> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they, the whole crew just walks up on the doorstep. <laughs> like, oh, ow. <laughs> yeah. Owen's like, give um, me the pliers. Yeah, he's like, I'm going oh in. My God. <laughs> um, mm. So after this scene, we see kind of, well, so it sounds like while Owen's at work, uh, TK gets an idea and he oh my God. <laughs> emails through Zoe's private email or through her EDU email from the school yeah. asking her to come over. And you can tell he's nervous about talking to her. Yeah. I, I, this this whole scene, I'm like, oh my god. Mm, yeah. I, and I was at first, I was like, where is this conversation gonna go? Because it starts out with like TK, and like he's like, so you and my dad are like having fun. He's like, he's like fishing for information, and like I, she was kind of like, I guess we're having fun. He's like. You think it's going to be more? So I, I don't know if like I, I almost saw Zoe panic there for a second because I was like, yeah, it's, she's like probably worrying about like what. But but TK, like, he's like actually it's like the third time this year, the second time this year I've almost died. So he's like I'm wanting to make sure that my dad's going to be okay if some I'm not around. Yeah, uh, which I, I was like, uh, but it also made me wonder because I know we've talked about TK's mental health in other episodes. Um, if he's reaching out to Zoe because she's a psychology professor, um, that makes me wonder if he's not seeing a therapist anymore. No, I think he still is. <clears throat> really? Um, yeah, because, like, I, I feel like he still is just because, like, I don't know. I just, Owen probably wouldn't let him stop. Yeah, that's my thought. And also, like, yeah. I feel like he may be what his intentions of asking her over was for advice but it was also like curiosity and then also like there may be some things he maybe didn't want to talk to a therapist about or maybe he, yeah he she was somewhat of a comfortable person even though they like literally spoke hardly any words before that <laughs> but like i don't know well, yeah. yeah, and I can. I guess I can put. I mean, I can. I put myself in TK's position. You know, I've already had two major instances where I've been close to death, and my dad, who now has cancer, is potentially seeing somebody, and he's kind of curious: is this person serious? Is this just for some fun? Is she going um, to become a, a uh, could second she be step something mother? more? Yeah, third actually. Well, oh, yeah, step second step, step mother. mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I just, I, so I can kind of see where TK was going with that. Cause like by now, you know, TK is kind of starting to wonder, like, did I ever want to be a firefighter? What, am I really meant to do this? Which we then, you know, as he goes on to talk to Zoe, when she finally says, okay, what's going on and what, what's the questions for? She's like, do you have anybody to talk to? <laughs> and she's, he's like, well, 
we did hear this. This is the first time that TK's really, ex- uh, not accepted, but like actually said that TK, like Carlos is his boyfriend. Like he calls him his boyfriend. Well, I guess well, he's my boyfriend. Really, yeah, I guess. Well, I don't even really know is my boyfriend. Boyfriend. It's all kind of new. <laughs> so, and Zoe starts having fun there. She's like, oh. Yeah. Which is funny because she first thought Owen was gay. Yeah. When they met. <gasps> Which so it's like she probably's like, oh, I mean, she's like, so dad's not gay, but so. <laughs> I mean, she focuses on human sexuality. She's gonna be very intrigued with that. That is <laughs> true. That is true. I forgot about that part. Oh, I didn't even remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then, kind of through all the back and forth, Zoe quickly kind of, I think she kind of figures out. She's like, okay, you're starting to question some of your life choices, and then all of a sudden, TK says, "But I've all, but." all I've ever wanted to do was be a firefighter. And she's like, yeah, I never brought that up, but it's funny that you should, or that you did. And he just kind of looked up like, he goes, oh, yeah. So she kind of like hit the nail on the head with that one that, you know, that's, so he's starting to question whether he wants to be a firefighter anymore. After something like that happens, getting shot on the job would probably put things in perspective. Right. But that's not a normal injury for firefighters. That is true. That is true. That was completely an accident, but... Yeah. But still. Yeah. I mean, like, he'd been through a lot in the past year. Yeah. And, yeah, that's going to make anybody. And also, his life was uprooted earlier. Yeah. It probably, this was probably the first time he had a moment to actually breathe. Yeah. Start thinking. True. So after this scene, you kind of get back to Judd's uh, dad, who has fallen pretty bad through a glass table and has a pretty bad gash on his leg and he calls 911 and he asks specifically for grace and she has to call the paramedics and she has to kind of walk him through how to make a tourniquet and how to help with the bleeding and then he's like we don't have to tell judd right (laughs) and i can (laughs) see the moment of like grace thinking i have to tell my husband (laughs) yeah i can't not because like how am i going to explain this yeah Um, she's like uh please don't put me in that situation yeah um but then we're back to like tk and like tk comes back to the firehouse which is awesome because like buttercup was all excited and the crew was yeah Yeah. it was a good moment to see him back yeah at the station and mateo like hugs him and he's like (laughs) oh "Oh." yeah he's like oh come on come on i love that yeah tk wants to talk to owen and they go upstairs to the office and TK starts asking his dad, like, why did you want to become a firefighter? And we learn a little more about Owen, which is kind of cool. Because so Owen talked about he dropped out of law school in his second year, um, which his older son, Matthew, is actually a law, uh, graduate of law school. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was kind of a cool little parallel. And he kind of explained the fire academy and joining her um, because he didn't think that they the how family could handle two lawyers oh my gosh (laughs) and then he talked about um being a firefighter because he'd been a lifeguard um before he dropped out of college and had a a pretty monumental save that really stuck with him and ever since then he's just been chasing the rush of saving people and so tk's like you're an addict (laughs) (laughs) just like me and then TK shares, you know, this is all all he's ever wanted to do since he was a kid was be a firefighter. Mm-hmm. And now he's starting to wonder, which I'm I'm I give props to TK for actually telling his dad that. Yeah, because he could have easily just hidden it and not said anything and just let, you know, gone by. But he actually wanted, went to his dad and he told him, like, I don't know if I want to come back. I think that that speaks to their close relationship that he's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm not going to hide this. I need to talk to my dad about this. I think that also ha- partially had to do with the fact that his dad was also his captain and yeah. would probably get it more yeah. than anybody else would. But then TK kind of admits one big thing to Owen and he's like, I think he's like, ever since I was a kid and we know that he was about seven years old when 9-11 happened, he shares that he's not sure if he ever wanted to be a firefighter. Maybe he just wanted his dad. And so he's like to follow. So he followed in his dad's footsteps so he could be close to him. And Owen it does admit that he's like, yeah, my firehouse is my adopted family, but you're always going to be my son, no matter what. He'll be on his side, whatever he chooses, which is super awesome for Owen to say that. Yeah. Because there's so many times you see that, you know, the father is a big, big wig in a department or something. And then 
the son has to follow in dad's footsteps. And if he doesn't, he's a disgrace to the family and just all those bad stories, either, you know, it's fictionalized or in real life. Um, so to have Owen be so supportive of TK in whatever he chooses is just really awesome. Yeah. And then like TK wants, well, TK kind of is like, well, there is one thing and he, so then we immediately see them mm-hmm. go visit the kid that shot him, which I love this scene. Yeah. And oh my gosh, like, same. Yeah. And I love, like, so he, like, sits with the kid and he's, like, playing with Lego. It's so cute. And I love <laughs> how, because I know Ronan tweeted this, I think he did, that, like, so he, like, at one point, like, the kid's like, I'm sorry I shot you. And TK's like, it's okay, just don't do it again. <laughs> or whatever. And, yeah, like, and the- he, like, shakes his hand and that wasn't, yeah, like, but- something yeah. that, like, was in the script. And TK's right. like, the kid was a method actor or something like that. Yeah, yeah, For I Ronan. remember that. Yeah, he was saying that it was, like, the, the, they said, like, one of them says deal, and then, like, they, there was no handshake, but it just hap- happened and they filmed it a couple of different ways and that's the one they went with even though it wasn't scripted yeah yeah which is why i love lone star so much because they always Mm -hmm. seem to do stuff like that they're like okay this turned out it was on script but we like it yeah like there's just so many things that they like don't have on the original script but they just like end up being in the final take which is so cool yeah well and i think in that in that scene specifically i mean it's very rare for people who are shot by somebody to to um come face to face with their shooter in that kind of situation yeah yeah Um, so for him to tk to want to see this kid and to like reassure this kid that like he understood that he was just protecting his family and that he's not like he's reminding the kid that like he's still alive yeah because like if i was seven years old and i shot somebody i'd be like terrified yeah anywhere you know i was I don't want to kill people. Or- yeah. Yeah. And also the part where um, he's like playing with like a cop, like a thing. Yeah. And he's like, do you like cops? And in my head, I was like, TK's like, yes. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I, can I say the way that I think about okay. children? Yeah. yeah. There's one in specific. I like it. Yeah. One specifically. <laughs> And he's gorgeous. <laughs> yes, he is with his curly hair. Yeah, love those curls. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, and then after after TK is and it's done hanging out with the kid, Owen and him walk outside. And first off, we do learn that TK is twenty six years old, mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> Owen does share that he's proud of him, and he says, "You're gonna make a great dad one day." And TK is like, and so will you. <laughs> they love that. Like, they have that, like, really powerful, like, I'm proud of you moment. And then TK's like, yeah. And you'll make a good dad, too. <laughs> and then always, I think, like, every time I hear that, it makes me go, away. what? <laughs> TK, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, ah, I'm just going to take it on face value and not think about it. Right. <laughs> Oh man! And so we kind of move on to kind of the wrapping up of. So we wrapped up the TK storyline with Owen in this specific episode, and then we move on to kind of closing out with Grace and Judd's Stewart um, scenes. Uh, Stewart's in the hospital, um, and Stewart's like, "Okay, fine, give it to me." <laughs> and Judd's like, "I'm not gonna." give you the riot act he's like but you are gonna make some changes and uh they give him one of those really ugly looking necklaces that are the the medical alert (laughs) and he's like oh some new new jewelry (laughs) Um, and i love him he's like okay i'll wear this and i'll do these things that you're telling me to do on one you guys work on giving me a grandbaby (gasps) i love that like and joe goes oh Uh, yeah he gets all flustered and especially and grace is like yeah why don't we Uh, well why not husband (laughs) and jed's like well we got a lot to worry about right now she's like we got a lot to worry about what (laughs) i love that i would love to see a grace jet baby yeah yeah all right and then we have the bridge into the 10th episode 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. We start to see some clips of like the space station. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're in the getting ready to get hit with a coronal mass ejection, which is the like a solar flare. Yeah. Like, it was so yeah. quick between nine and ten starting with this and I was like, Okay, what is happening? Mm-hmm. And then like they showed like a little promo for like the next part where you see like the bus crash and that yeah. stuff that happens and then you see like the that stuff but like I'm like there's not enough time to be like okay what's going to happen like I'm like okay what's happening but then it starts and I'm like okay right that's <laughs> right because 9 and 10 aired back to back that same night yeah so we didn't really have to worry too much because we were getting it right away yeah yeah um yeah I'm a science geek so I love this kind of stuff oh yeah like I love natural disasters so I just I'm curious like I, I loved how they threw it in there like yeah I, I wonder I'm assuming this is going to be, I guess, you could, like, an EMP, because it'll throw off, like, computerized systems, which is why, like, I think this, I mean, obviously the space station's going to be, like, the first people to really catch on that something's going on. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're up there, and they're keeping it on, and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that was, I don't know, all in all, I think it was a really good episode. I think we got a lot of great moments with Owen and TK, which, you know, I love. We got a little bit, we learned a little bit more about Judd and his family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. TK woke up, thank God. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, I really do like these episodes. I think they might, I mean, it's hard to make a favorite, but I think they might be some of my favorites, just like storyline eyes, especially like looking into 10. I think 10 may, I mean, I like a lot of them, but like 10 might be my favorite. Might be. Yeah, I yeah. think because it, you know, 10 will wrap up a lot of the sto- seasonal storylines that we've had for the whole season. And Tarlos. <laughs> Tarlos. Of course. <laughs> yes. Like, but that's why, like, the ten scenes are, like, my favorite t- Tarlos scenes is because, like, we get we get to see them um, kind of together. Yeah. It was, it was Tarlos happy, and I was, I'm off with it. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us and listening. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Anchor. We are also on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, and almost anywhere where podcasts can be found. On iTunes, please rate us and leave us a good review. Or bad, but just tell us. It would mean a lot to us. (laughs) You you guys can follow the podcast on our socials at 911LSRoundup on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can follow me, Katie, at for love of Tarlos on Instagram and at for love of Tarlos on Twitter. And you can follow me, Grace, at Ronan Rafa nine one one on Instagram and at sheepgirl thirty one on Twitter. And you can follow me, EJ, at EJ eight three zero two at Instagram and Twitter. Right. Bye. 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 <laughs>